And we're back. Welcome to the Constitution Line by Line. I'm Paul Fabrizio. And I'm Don Frazier. I teach history. He teaches political science. We're at McMurray University. In Abilene, Texas. And we have embarked upon this quest <laughs> to read and explain the U.S. Constitution line by line. And then afterwards, we're going to have our heads examined. That's right. It was, this was such an easier project when it was theoretical. <laughs> yes. All right. So we but are it's now. More fascinating. It, it is. Absolutely. I can't think of a better way to spend our time or for you to spend your time um, uh, to get acquainted with your country, maybe for the first time. Okay. Because it has that feel to me. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've been through the Constitution so many times. I've been teaching it for 20-something years. And yet going through it like this is a bit of an intense process. And it's it certainly a learning process because we have different perspectives on this thing. Going to be a little PTSD involved in this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So we are now at Article 1, Section 9, Clause 2. Right. And I'm going to read this one. This has to do with the suspension of the writ of habeas corpus. And this reads, The privilege of the writ of habeas corpus shall not be suspended unless when in cases of rebellion, rebellion. or invasion, the public safety may require it. So we've got habeas corpus except when we don't. That's right. So the first thing, of course, is what is habeas corpus? Yeah, that's, you, know, you expect somebody to turn into a rabbit somewhere when you say it. Habeas corpus! Isn't it when Harry Potter or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I think it does. Yeah. I, I think it's, okay, so habeas corpus is a right that we have when we're apprehended by the government, the police, to go before a judge. Yeah. It, and it, it means show the body. Show, yeah. You got to turn up the body, or why are you messing with me? Yeah. So you have a right to find out why you're being detained. Correct. Okay. Unless you're in rebellion or when the public safety may require it. Right. And so the question really is then has this writ of habeas corpus ever been suspended? Because. <laughs> this, this what what you read, Don, says two things. Number one is that there is this writ of habeas corpus. There is such a thing. Which, and by the way, this is the first civil right that we have in the Constitution. And it comes from English common law, and then it actually goes all the way back to some of the Roman Constitution. Yeah. So, so it's it's a very important right, and it's in the body of the Constitution. We often think about rights as the Bill of Rights and yeah. the amendments, but there's three of them, and this is the first one, that are in the actual body of the Constitution. So, number one, it says that we have this. Number two, it says it can be taken away. It can be suspended. Yeah, you're born with this right, but. But. <laughs> so, it could be suspended. has any president ever suspended? Why, yes. Yes, yes they he, have. Yeah. You know, Abraham Lincoln comes Dr. to mind. Uh, wait, wait, not. Good old Abe. Well, I Abe thought he freed the slaves. Hey, it was a case of rebellion and when the public safety may require it. Right. I suspect that the the writ of habeas corpus might have been suspended with the detention of the California Japanese. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's start with <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Okay. Abraham Lincoln, there he was in Washington, D.C. Yes. Surrounded on the south by Virginia, southern state. Yeah. The north... By Maryland, Maryland, a border state, a but border state, kind of a southern state, but kind of a southern state with a lot of pro-southern sympathy. Ooh, the streets of Baltimore flecked with patriotic gore. And Abraham Lincoln didn't like being surrounded by that. Correct. So therefore, he ordered the arrest and the imprisonment of public officials. People that look shady. That's right. And I think, but I'm not positive. Mayor of Baltimore, I think. Well, he had it coming. Yeah. Oh, he did? Wow. <laughs> he Lincoln. didn't control the riot. <laughs> so where they were imprisoned was at Fort McHenry. Yeah, nice. Where Fort McHenry, of course, is a beautiful fort in Baltimore. It's gorgeous. And it is where Francis Scott Key wrote the Star Spangled Banner. It's where the Star Spangled Banner was seen by dawn's early light. That's right. And so there was Francis Scott Key out in the water looking at the bombardment of Fort McHenry. McHenry. Yeah. And he wrote the words of the Star Spangled Banner. And then, what, 30, 40 years later, 
Abraham Lincoln is imprisoning people. Put them in the clink. Spending their <laughs> habeas corpus rights. He did that with some other politicians across uh, the Midwest. And, uh, yeah, there's a yeah. Th- yeah, there's a lot of suspensions of habeas we, we, corpus. We don't think about this with Abraham Lincoln because of what he did in holding the country together. Well, he's got his own temple. <laughs> You're right, he does, Washington, D.C. But what we have to remember is that the other part of him was he was a practical politician, and he felt as a politician, I got to pretty hard control nose. these people, and that means locking them up. I'm going to lock them up. So you I've been in the jail cells of these people at Fort McHenry. It was really cool. Did you go down there? Oh, yeah, I've been to McHenry, but I was looking at it from an entirely different angle. So I saw somebody was locked up in this cell, and I went, eh. Probably oh. had it coming. No, you know, I, I went, get up on the ramparts and looking out into the road. No, I went down to the jail <laughs> cell yeah, and then went up to the rampart because they're so cool. Yeah, but I went down to the jail cell because it was like, wow, this is where Lincoln did it. And you know, I kept on thinking about these politicians locked up, you know, for a couple of years yeah. in a cell. Just ugh. well, and you know, I've been to the same cells, but at Fort Warren in Boston Harbor. Okay. But those guys were rebs. Okay. So in the case of rebellion, yeah. there is no habeas corpus. No, I think about it's just assumed. <laughs> so. so anyway, that's the first example of the suspension of habeas corpus. Well, I'm sure there's probably others. Right. Uh, the Andrew I, I Jackson, I'm it. sure, probably had something to do with that uh, in his in his presidency, but I can't point to it right off the top of my head. Yeah. But he seems like one that would probably take the same practical approach. Yeah, yeah. Politicians will do what is necessary to retain power. And so we had ones who did. But let's go to the big one, World War II. Sure. And this was the internment of the Japanese. Correct. Uh, the Japanese-Americans uh, in internment camps all along the West Coast. And um, they, of course, actually petitioned – the Supreme Court uh, took the U.S. government to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled against the Japanese and in favor of the American government. And it was only in 2018 was that Korematsu decision overturned by the Supreme Court. You know, there's a lot of misunderstanding about that entire episode. Mm-hmm. And usually the m- misunderstanding leans heavily towards this being an atrocity and a violation of civil rights and things like that. Which, which it was. <laughs> which it was, absolutely. But when I asked my students how many Japanese Americans in Massachusetts were interned? Oh, the answer would be zero. Zero. That's right. exactly right. So my students are coming to me thinking that this is a coast-to-coast phenomena. Mm-hmm. Well, if it's not a coast-to-coast phenomena, why is it, you know, why is it not a coast-to-coast phenomena? Well, maybe it's not based on race in general, but specifically about race on the West Coast, Mm -hmm. facing a possible Japanese invasion. Mm -hmm. So there's public safety concerns. Uh, There's pretty good evidence that the Japanese had agents in Hawaii Mm -hmm. that helped give them the lay of the land so that their airstrikes could be more Mm -hmm. uh, successful, Mm -hmm. effective. So Put into a 1941-42 context, I can see where you would suspend habeas corpus mm-hmm. because of public safety concerns. Mm-hmm. Um, the Supreme Court agreed with you. How many How many Japanese Americans were interned? About 120,000? Something like that yeah. is what I remember. Yeah. So there was a good number. Also, you know, part of my family is Italian. Sure. And so... I've always been sensitive about this. Sure. And also, I grew up on the West Coast. Absolutely. And I've been to uh, at least one of these internment camps. Um, what's left of them now, basically, there's nothing there. Yeah. But you could still go. Um, to like Fort Carson, Colorado, or someplace like that. Yeah. Um, I went with my mother to and my wife to one in or- uh, Oregon or Northern California. Okay. Um, but so they weren't moving them too far. No. In no, many they, cases. They, for the most part, they, they kept them on the West Coast. Um, but my family came to the United States in the 1920s, my, my Italian family. And when the Japanese were rounded up, there was also Germans and Italians that lost some of their rights. The FBI visited my grandmother. Wow. And they were, uh, living in New York at the time. 
and they took away their radio because they were afraid there would be communication with Italian submarines or something. Yeah, <laughs> and, and my grandmother escaped from Italy. She migrated from Italy with her with my family yeah. to avoid Mussolini and the very idea that the FBI would come and investigate them as possible stooges of Mussolini was just offensive to her to well, the end of her life. Correct. And so But this but, is an existential war. Right. Of course it is. And you know, then as you know, she lost her son, my uncle in World War II yeah, back been, in Enzio. Been in to Italy. his grave going again. Yeah. So um therefore this is uh I have a, a real sympathy for what the Japanese sure. have been through. You know, I mean, Latin America it, rounded up its German and Italians, Italians. Yeah. and shipped them to the U.S. and said, y'all watch them for us. <laughs> and so yeah. there were some pins in South Texas where that occurred. Yeah. So in the context of the time, many people, including Roosevelt, again, someone who I think justify is, is upheld as an awesome leader, yeah. made – calculations using the words of this document sure to derive people of basic rights and it's it's and this is congress's authority this is clearly presidential authority well but it's congress in the constitution yeah yeah so um i mean and it was upheld by the supreme court at the time so there you go all three yeah i mean and how long were they held uh for the most part they were held until 44 and 45 Really? The whole duration of the war. Yeah. And, you know, their property was seized. They weren't given compensation for their for their property. Really? So they, the government came in and seized their house and said, our house now. Exactly. Yeah, and so it was sold to somebody else and somebody else got it. And, and the, the federal Japanese government didn't pocketed the, yeah, the cash. Yeah, it was just horrible. Huh. It was the very things that should not have taken place by the Constitution, but it's allowed by the Constitution. You and know, that's the thing. I take umbrage with the seizure of property. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is, you know, all right, fine. We're going to uh, essentially eminent domain your house, mm-hmm. which is a different altogether thing, but we're going to seize it and we're going to sell it. Proceeds should have gone to the families who yeah, own that didn't. property. They didn't, at least in the cases that I've heard about, they did not go back to the families. Interesting. Yeah. That's, it, it was, that's a gross violation of... The Constitution. But in the context of the time. Yeah, but the habeas corpus talks about the person itself. doesn't say anything about property. Okay, well. <laughs> huh, maybe that needs to be unpacked. Yeah. Oh, well. And, and, of course, you know, as you know, the internment of the Japanese led to the creation of that uh, Japanese-American unit. The and, Nisei Battalion, yes, actually who, two of them. Who did marvelous things. One of the most yeah. decorated military units in the United States Army. Yeah. Fought all through Italy. We're going to a bunch of their battlefields here shortly. Yeah. yeah. Very good. So that's okay. our line. That's the Constitution. Gives and takes at the same <laughs> moment. All right, so we've talked about habeas corpus. I bet we get some other Latin phrases in uh, shortly. All right, so, that's our line. We'll be right back. <laughs> 